Okay, all you want is one simple answer. How much pressure will gap pad put on a component if we deflect to a known percentage? It seems like a simple question, yeah? <laughs> well, it's not. At face value, it seems that we have all the details to answer the question. Like distance between the components to heatsink, pad area, and percent deflection. But there are so many other complex and unknown factors affecting pressure. Factors like modulus, area geometry, surface friction, temperature, boundary conditions, rate of compression. <coughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Rate of compression is actually rate of strain, but you know what I mean. Now, where was I? <coughs> ah, yes, thank you, Lucky. Take the rate of compression during the application process, for example. Because gap pad is viscoelastic, pressure applied slowly during the application process will make it more viscous. That is, the ability to flow and relieve pressure. <laughs> but if the same amount of pressure is applied only much, much faster, the viscoelastic gap pad will behave more elastically. That is, it wants to retain its original shape. <laughs> But, Professor, you may ask like a little busybody, why would I compress the material at different rates? <sighs> because not all applications are the same. Sometimes we use the hands. <coughs> and sometimes the robotics with the high-speed talk. <coughs> then there's the boundary conditions. How much space exactly is available for the gap pad material to deflect? Do we really know the precise properties of surface friction, boundary conditions, geometric areas, temperature, compression rate of every surface that are touching at all times? Of course we don't. That would be nearly impossible to model all of those data sets, not to mention time consuming. Yeah, this question is more complicated than it seems. But, lucky for us, we have an easy place to begin. This quick compression calculation can guesstimate an approximate pressure. Let's try an example for gap pad ultra soft. First, find the value of Young's modulus on the data sheet. Ah, we see it is 8 psi. For our example, we will use a pad 100 mils thick. Now, subtract the amount you want to deflect. Let's try uh, 15%. One tenth of an inch thickness deflected 15% leaves a thickness of 85 one hundredths of an inch, which we divide by the original thickness of the pad, one tenth of an inch. Then, simply multiply by the Young's modulus of 8 psi. Now we can easily solve the question of how much pressure will go on the component. 1.2 pounds per square inch. So let's try this once again. But this time we will deflect the same material 30%. As you can see, this now gives us 2.4 pounds per square inch. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to tell them. Like he says, trying out three versions is usually best. Okay, one more time using a different material like Gap Pad 1500S30, which has a Young's modulus of 16 psi, and this time we will deflect it 20%. We use the same formula, but the pressure is now different again. So, the answer to your question, exactly how much pressure will gap pad put on a component if we deflect it to a known percentage, is, simply put, guess, test, success. Okay, thank you.